Well, hey everybody, it's Montel here, and thanks so much for tuning in to this edition of Free Thinking with Montel. And I'm going to tell you, right now is the time for a lot of us to do some free thinking, because a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands. You're sitting at home, you know, and I hope you're not doing what I do every now and then, but, you know, the second I get a little troubled by something or I'm watching TV and I'm yelling back at the TV because I hate what I see and I'm all anxiety ridden, what do I do? Get up, walk to the refrigerator, grab something stupid out of there to eat, sit back down and sit and watch. Now, at least I've been going to the gym, but I got to tell you something, I'll be 100% honest with you. This COVID thing has really sent me and my entire regimen you know, into a maelstrom. I literally have never eaten as poorly as I have eaten in the last six months. Um, in the last couple of weeks, uh, my exercise routine has kind of not faded by the wayside, but literally I keep not running into excuses, but there are things that happen throughout the day that end up pushing my workouts out or pushing them back. And I've got to get myself back on track. And I thought, you know what? There's a lot of people probably feeling the same way I am. And, you know, why not get a little jump start? Why not get a little, a little probe or a little push? And so that's why I have the guest that I have on today who is, you know, a best-selling author. She's a vegan biohacker. She's a, a wellness entrepreneur. She's lived all over the world. She's fluent in five different languages. And she's here to talk about today the benefits of a vegan lifestyle, which she has led now for over a decade. And, you know, with cancer and obesity and diabetes, on the rise that almost have reached an epidemic levels, epidemic levels here in the United States, the U.S. medical system is the third highest cause or states that there's a third highest cause of death and most expensive in the world. And while good nutrition can help solve many of these problems, the American public is getting a lot of contradictory advice on nutrition. And some of it has harmed us with this barrage of things like, you know, fad diets and people don't know where to look. And I often say, you know, if there was one diet that was good, you know, if you went up online and put in the word diet, you'd only find one. But instead, when you go up online and say diet, you get about a million of them. So if all million of them work, then something's wrong here. But how do we navigate this? And especially right now at this tough time and tough, tough juncture, you know, in the world, uh, you know, we're going to start to see the impacts of this pandemic hit our food sources over the next four to five months in ways that we've never even contemplated. I find it now that part of the reason I'm using it as an excuse, but part of the reason why I've had such a difficult time navigating my own diet, and my own eating regimen is because, you know, I, as a lot of you know, suffer from a chronic uh, debilitating, you know, uh, uh, what some call an autoimmune disease, but, you know, I've been dealing with this now for 20 years. I think I've been fighting a good fight. And I had been fighting a good fight by going to the grocery store myself. So I would go to the grocery store and I'd get to pick, read labels, pick and choose, pick and choose. But now I got to tell you, because and I'm going to say it 100% honestly, you know, with the number of idiots out here who don't wear masks and, you know, don't practice any social distancing and literally don't even seem to practice good hygiene. I don't want to be in a grocery store with some people. I don't want to stand around people. So I do what a lot of us do. And that's use a delivery service to deliver my groceries to the house. But then what happens? You pick some other person to pick your food for you and they're not reading labels. They just grab whatever they fits that category and throw it in the shelf. And they always say, well, they were out of that. So I'm at a little bit of a loss. And, you know, I thought, you know, why not help you the way I'm going to help me? And that's call upon the resources of somebody who knows what she's talking about. She walks the walk, you know, not just talks the talk, but walks the walk and understands, you know, that it's tough, but she knows how to motivate. And I'm calling upon her to motivate me. So, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome and get the motivation that I'm going to get today from Ariana Summer. Thank you so much, Ariana, for being here and being a part of the show today. Montel, thank you so much for having me as your guest. I'm thrilled to be with you and share what I know. Absolutely. And, you know, I can tell you, it's been quite a while since we've been able to be together. I know your husband, Clay, is a very, very close friend of mine. And, you know, we spent time together over the last few years. But, you know, here we are sitting here in the middle of this pandemic. And I can't visit you guys and say hi. I got to say hi this way. And, you know, I, I, I'm so glad that we booked you today because I can use a little pep talk myself because first off, 
I got to tell people, I, and I'm not trying to date you, date your age when I say this, but girlfriend, I've known you for almost 20 years. You don't age a day. <laughs> you don't age a minute. What the heck are you doing? <laughs> Thank you, Montel. It's very kind of you to say. Well, I think a um, big, big reason for that is indeed the nutrition. I have been plant-based now for over 13 years, and what you put inside of your body that's what your body will give back to you. And as a matter of fact, I have to credit you with starting to look at nutrition. We've known each other for six, six, 20 years now, 16, 20 years now, because you put my attention on look into juicing, look into taking certain supplements like um, evening primrose oil, and that set off a journey of wellness for me. So eating a whole foods, plant-based diet is the single best thing you can do for yourself, whether you want to focus on anti-aging or on your general health and wellness. And one thing is really important to note, the way your body looks on the outside, if it has the energy to expend nutrients into your hair, your skin, whatever, shows that what's going on on the inside, what's even more important, is actually also going pretty well. Absolutely. And in your case, it's going pretty well, homie. I'm telling you, you know, yeah, I, I, for anybody who's tuning in and watching this, I'm not lying. This child has not aged a day since the day. I mean, you don't look like you're, you're over 21 years old. Well, I'm 43 now, and I've never felt better in my entire life. That's crazy. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, this whole idea of a plant-based diet. Because, you know, some people think that, you know, you've got to be vegan or you've got to be vegetarian and have a hard time understanding those two terms. So explain those two terms first, and then let's explain plant-based. Yes. So vegetarians are people who will not eat any type of meat product. So they won't eat anything, let's say like fowl or veal, beef or fish. However, they will eat eggs and uh, dairy products. And somebody who is vegan will not consume any animal products at all. So the foundation of the vegan philosophy is to cause a at least the least harm you possibly can. Now within vegans, there's also fractions. For example, some vegans may say, I still eat honey if it's produced in an ethical way. Others say no way, no animal products at all. And then of course you have the plant-based or plant-focused diet, which is a little more flexible. I personally adhere to my own philosophy, which is AVAP, an acronym for as vegan as possible. So in my case, that means I eat plant-based 97% of the time. I'll still have a little bit of honey. Every few years, I might have some cheese somewhere in Italy. So that's what that means for me. And I think it's an easier way to approach it. A lot of people feel very overwhelmed when they think they've got to change their life 100% immediately. Let's talk a little bit about that. Now, when, when, when did you become a vegan? So I uh, switched to a vegetarian diet 13 years ago. This was actually when I had an extensive travel to China coming up. I already was really watching what I ate, everything organic, the meat, the dairy. Going to China, I knew there would be a lot of business dinners happening. I would not have any control over the quality of the food. So I said, okay, vegetarian. This went so well that when I came back to the United States, I just stuck with it. And for me, the logical consequence a few years later, um, seven years ago now, was to go vegan. And why? Because for me, it connected so many dots. Everything that I care about, whether it's my personal health, societal health, um, animal uh, welfare, whether it's the, um, you know, the healthy environment and social justice, everything is connected to what I put on my plate. What I put on my plate, I vote for the world I live in today and tomorrow, every day. And so now, I mean, it's got to be tough to navigate the vegan lifestyle, or is it as tough as I think it is? You know, in the beginning, it may seem overwhelming. Um, and I like to tell people, look, you got to think about it like this. It's not like taking away things, but it's adding things. So if you want to start looking into the plant-based lifestyle, my advice is go easy on yourself. Start with one thing first. Maybe you want to cut out red meats. And then you further down the road, you can cut out chicken and fish. See how that feels. While you're adjusting to that, make sure you get all the nutrients you need. Don't become a junk food vegan, which is fun, but it's not a whole foods plant-based diet. But make sure you really eat 
whole foods, as fresh as possible, as unprocessed as possible. And then you may look at cutting out dairy. Now, this may be a tough one when people say, oh, I'm addicted to cheese, it's so hard. Well, you literally are because there's opioid-like substances in dairy. Um, this is, this is a, a natural biological fact. It's made so the calves go back to their mothers and drink the milk. So you, so it is, it is a process, but there's so much good information online. There's plenty of amazing recipes online. I say, start easy. Don't be too hard on yourself. And when you take a break or fall off this plant-based wagon, don't trash the whole mission. Just jump straight back on the next day. It's all good. Gotcha. Gotcha. And now, I mean, is there, and I, I, I talk to people all the time who, you know, there was a period of time that I was I also was 100% vegetarian and I was 100% vegan for a while. Then I kind of shifted myself back into, you know, consuming some plants, some animal-based products and, and did so for years, very, very sparingly. And I know people who kind of follow that kind of a regimen now where they stretch out their, you know, animal-based products to 10 to 15 days apart. Is, is that okay for some or do you have to go all in, all out? Uh, so what I think is very, what's very, very important to realize is that, of course, every body is different and you will know what feels good to you in the short term and the long term. I am not um, ultra radical vegan. I want to invite people to try the lifestyle. So I would never put somebody in a corner and point a finger and say, you are an awful person because you have a steak or salmon once or twice a month. No. If that works for you and you're mainly plant-based, I think that's a wonderful thing and is already doing a lot of good for your body, is doing a lot of good for the planet. That would be kind of like a Mediterranean kind of a diet, right? Yes. And you know what's interesting, actually? The Italian, the Mediterranean diet uh, 60 years ago or so was not as heavily meat-laden as it is today. I recently spoke to an Italian friend and uh, before they kind of adapted more of a also the uh, American type diet, they were focused on legumes, on plenty of fresh you know, vegetables, cheese and meats very rarely. That's actually an interesting thing to know. That is very interesting, you know, especially when, you know, we picture Italian cuisine in America as nothing but, you know, uh, flour and cheese. <laughs> exactly. Right. Whenever somebody says, make me some spaghetti, it's like, oh, where, where's all the meat sauce? Yeah. Gotcha. Now, is it hard to make sure you get enough B12 when you're doing a vegan diet? I personally don't find it hard at all. I do supplement with B12. Um, another thing that a lot of people may not know, B12 is not made by animals. It's made by bacteria that in nature animals would usually pick up by grazing. So nowadays we have a huge problem. First of all, our soils are very depleted. Second of all, the animals that are raised in animal agriculture, you know, in these mass, mass produced meat facilities, they don't get natural vitamin B12. They actually get supplemented with vitamin B12 so that you as the consumer then end up eating supplemented meat. So you're actually also getting supplemented just via the animal. So uh, for me, it's not hard at all. I take a supplement once a day and I'm all covered. It's very simple. Gotcha. And, uh, you know, I mean, I know a lot of people have moved over this plant-based diet and, you know, there's been a couple of really high profile documentaries out there on a subject talking about why we should do so. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, because of that, you have a lot of these fast food chains creating this stuff that's called impossible burgers or impossible uh -huh. meat, you know, as an alternative. But I've heard a lot about this and some of these plant-based, supposedly impossible meats aren't really as good for you as regular meat. Well, it depends what type of meat we're talking about. Now, these um, plant-based burgers, you just mentioned impossible burgers or let's say beyond burger, they're obviously a processed food. I love them. They taste amazing. But for me, they're tr a treat once in a while because I try to avoid processed foods. However, for people who would like the flavor and are in a transition period, it's a very good alternative. And uh, we also got to mention that a lot of the meat foods we buy are highly processed and have a lot of additives as well. And um, certainly these first versions of plant-based um, burgers, for example, or sausages, all the stuff that's out there right now, they're the, um, 
they're the first version. We're going to see version 2.0 soon. These people, these companies, they basically opened up the field and we're going to see these kinds of products getting better and healthier and even tastier every year. Because I think a lot of people don't understand the amount of damage that the, the beef industry and the chicken yeah. industry and the pork industry does to the planet. Let's talk a little bit about that. Would you? Absolutely. Yes. So we, we've been talking, uh, we've been talking a lot about climate change in the media in the last, not only the last months, but the last years, we've seen a youth movement, Fridays for Future, Greta Thunberg. So human beings all over the planet have become aware, wow, something really bad is happening. It's impacting us. Animal agriculture is responsible for 50% of the CO2 that gets expelled. The beef industry, the animal agriculture is responsible for over 90% of the destruction of the Amazon rainforest. Every year we have 2.7 trillion fish pulled out of the oceans. Basically this ecosystem that is so vital for us to survive and thrive is going belly up because of our animal consumption. And so again, we get to vote for the world we live in today and tomorrow, the world we leave, leave for our children by what we put on our plate. We have the power to change this. I know it's really crazy, especially when you were just talking about, you know, the number of fish that we pull out of the ocean. Hmm. Yeah, I, I was working for a group, which is a shark coalition for the UN for several years and was just shocked at some of the information that I was able to glean just looking at some of the data worldwide, you know, I mean, a lot of people don't know that back, you know, it's very funny when you look at, let's say, um, tuna, you know, uh, back, you know, 100 years ago, you know, you could pull a tuna out of the ocean that was close to 1200 pounds. And now we've overfished so much that there are tuna that we think that we've caught, you know, the whopper when we catch a 300 pound tuna, we're really not even catching a fish that's completely grown out to the size that nature had it. I mean, there are pictures on walls and caves in the Mediterranean where they used to be able to go and put nets out, you know, near Gibraltar and drag in six and seven foot tuna, mm -hmm. seven and eight foot tuna. They have pictures drawn on the walls and yeah, people thought oh, it's just artwork. No, it's not just artwork. That was the real fish. That's what they were able to catch. Yes. And now they don't even exist. Yes. And uh, I think it's, we have to redefine our relationship to animals, um, whether we consume them or not, but even if we consume them, you know, we used to call it the Sunday roast. It was called that for a reason because Sunday, you got a big piece of meat, it was something special. And maybe during the week you had a little other piece of meat and fish, that's it. Nowadays, most people who eat the, um, you know, the regular American type diet, they'll eat meat and dairy three or four more times a day. And so many other countries around the globe are emulating our standard diet. We're seeing it in, uh, you know, countries like China, like India, where there's hugely expanding middle class that see these types of food as a status symbol. Cultures that have never eaten that much meat before, but now the last 10 years have started to do so. And the impact is so damaging. So we need to set a new standard. And we're starting to see that the impact on health. I mean, you know, yes. the impact on the rise on what we call autoimmune disease yes. around the planet has gone up, I think, with the commensurate with the amount of, of animal consumption that you, you're talking about. Yes, because first of all, I don't think the human body is made, and there's plenty of studies out there. For example, the uh, China study by uh, Dr. Campbell um, that corroborate that a huge amount of animal protein consumption is actually not good for human beings. Now put on top of that, that most of the animal protein consum consumed nowadays is so highly processed, is so highly full with antibiotics, pesticides from whatever foods the animals were fed, heavy metals and whatnot. We're literally putting a toxic, toxic cocktail into our bodies. And then we're, you know, oh my God, all of a sudden I got cancer. All of a sudden I got autoimmune disease. All of a sudden I got a heart attack. No, this has been in the making many, many, many years by our dietary choices. 
And the same applies, some people say, oh, it's genetics. My family, we just have heart attacks. We just have arthritis. No, what you share is not the genes. What you share is the dishes, the foods that your family has been eating for generations. Change your diet. You change everything. You change the state of your health. You change the state of your mind. And I think there's also a much deeper aspect to this. You change the way you relate to the world. I am absolutely, I know that when we start eating things that are healthier and more balanced and uh, not infused with a certain type of violence, we will also be more at peace with ourselves. So, you know, that's probably why I'm first spot for us to take a little break. I got to take a little break, patient bills. And then I'll come back and I want you to know that you've been listening to Ariana Summer, who is a world-renowned best-selling author. She's a vegan biohacker and wellness entrepreneur, and she's lived all over the world and is fluent in five languages and here today to talk about the benefits of not only a vegan lifestyle, but the benefits of a healthier lifestyle. I'm going to take a little break, pay some bills. We'll be back with more in just a minute. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to this edition of Free Thinking with Montel. And today we're talking to our guest who's a best-selling author, a vegan biohacker, a wellness entrepreneur, Ariana Summer. Thank you so much, Ariana, for being here and being part of the show today. Oh, thank you for having me as your guest. I'm super excited to be with you. Oh, for sure. Look, tap, tap, take me back for a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about your upbringing. Your father was an ambassador. Yep. So that really, you ended up growing all over the world. Take me back to your childhood. Well, you <laughs> my friend. So I was, I'm German born. I was born in Bonn, Germany, which was the intermediate capital before the reunification. And when I was eight weeks old, we moved to Sierra Leone in West Africa. That's uh, where I spent the first three, four years of my life. And as you may know, diplomats usually move um, uh, to another post every three to four years. So I grew after that. We went to New Delhi in India. Then we moved to Madrid, Spain, then back to Germany, uh, Bonn. Then we moved to Miami. In the United States, uh, which is actually where I first not met you, but saw you watching your TV show. And uh, from there, I actually uh, started traveling on my own, going to a German boarding school, uh, going to Berlin to study political sciences, and then moving to the UK. And now I have been living in the US for 16 years. Now, how many languages do you speak? Fluently, I speak five, and I speak a little bit of Mandarin. Wow, my goodness, and you're learning that right now, right? You've been studying? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Great. What are the other four, four languages, five languages you speak? English? Oh. <laughs> English, obviously. <laughs> German, French, Italian, and Spanish. Wow. Go ahead with your bad self, girlfriend. So, <laughs> you know, did you pick up any of these, you know, dietary ideas when you were younger with your parents? Or did this just come about later in life? I was raised, in a sense, in a typical German way, as um, in that meat was always a big part of our diet. I like to joke and say even my birthday cakes were made out of meat, which is actually not that far from the truth. I used to love meat, love it, eat a lot of it, and um, I never quit eating meat because the flavor bothered me. I think it tastes fantastic. Um, but I saw a lot of different ways of living and eating. Obviously, India has a big vegetarian uh, tradition, and then the Mediterranean diet, which I got to know in Spain. So I was also always surrounded by many delicious plant-based foods and cuisines. So I always knew that the option was there. And then, and then what actually turned you on to making a change? Um, it was a mix of a concern for my own health and also a concern for animal welfare. So before I switched to a vegetarian diet, which I became vegetarian before I became vegan, I had a ton of chronic conditions, things that I thought were normal. I had a lot of brain fog. I had a lot of mood swings. I always suffered from certain female issues and certain, you know, psoriasis, acne, you name it. Just really bothersome things, but which basically tell you that your body is in a state of chronic inflammation. And these little flare-ups that might just annoy us a bit, they can actually be precursors for very serious illnesses later on in life. So once I switched and cut out the meat, many, many things changed. Things just went away. 
uh, some of them literally within days, which was, and others within weeks, you know, skin cleared up um, uh, uh, and, and so the focus returned. Uh, I, I used to get colds and flus three, four times a year. I can't even remember the last time when I had something like that. What focusing on a plant-based diet is for your body does is simply amazing. It's the best thing I ever did. It boosts your immune system like nothing else. And I think especially these times we're all going through right now where it's really, really important that we keep strong and a high immunity to put more plants on your plate is a very good decision. Absolutely. And now, is there any products that are vegan products that you would tell consumers to maybe stay clear of? <laughs> yeah, so I think um, there's read labels. As with, you know, non-vegan products, you do want to read labels. If there's too many ingredients in them and ingredients you can't pronounce, you may want to steer clear. I think the simplest and easiest solution is to go with whole foods, uh, plant-based foods. Uh, you, I mean, if you go walk into a supermarket, which many of us still do, you know, with a mask on right now, of course, um, when you walk the outer perimeter of the supermarket, that's where you'll find the freshest whole foods. You know, the processed foods will be more in the center of the supermarket. So if you stay in the outer perimeter, you'll very likely to find the kinds of foods that serve you best. Absolutely. And now if you were going to make, let's say you're making dinner tonight for you and Clyde, what, what, what's, on the, what's on the menu? Ooh, I would probably go with one of my favorites, which is a vegan type bolognese pasta and a nice bottle of red wine. Need some comfort food today too. But the way I would make it is I would replace the meat with, there's many options. You can go with chopped up mushrooms. You can use, um, uh, uh, lentils that you pulse in your blender a little bit, or you can go, if you don't want to go with a whole food and you just want to go start with something that really tastes like meat, you can get one of the meat replacement products. And I promise you, you will, if you use my recipe, at least you will not notice a difference. I've had meat eaters ask for seconds and thirds. Wow. That's great. Absolutely great. And now do you do, do you eat pasta? Do you eat the uh, flour based pasta or, you know, <laughs> I have to confess, I love food, but I also really watch what I put into my body. So in my case, I go for gluten-free foods. I'm not celiac, but I've had myself tested years ago. I am sensitive to gluten. And so I'll avoid it as much as I can. And there's many good alternatives. You can get rice noodles. You can get noodles made out of quinoa. You can even get noodles uh, made out of lentils or, yeah, or some types of peas. So you yeah. don't have to... Mm -hmm. Zucchini yep. also, right? Zucchini. Noodles. Oh yes, I, I love, love those as well. So you get another fresh food, and you know, with zucchini noodles, then you just spiral. Yes, I love zucchini noodles also myself. Mm. Uh, and what principles do you practice as part of your healthy lifestyle? Do you meditate? Do you do yoga? I actually do a lot of things. I've uh, I meditate daily. I actually start my day with a gratitude practice. So before I even get up, I'll close my eyes and I'll think about the things I can be grateful for. And you know, sometimes it can be hard, even whether you have a perfect life or whether you're dealing with a lot of things like right now. But one thing I can always be grateful for, and that is I'm grateful for my breath. I'm breathing. I'm grateful. I am. I'm grateful for being. So that's a good starting place, even if there's a lot of stuff and you can't find your way to gratitude. But I find that sets up my day in a really, really, really good way. And I work out a lot. I'm one of these crazy people who work out six, seven times a week, sometimes two, three hours a day. My body needs it. My brain needs it. Not everybody needs it, but I found it really helps me be more productive and get more done. You work out in the mornings or you work out in the afternoons? I work out in the morning, before lunch, and in the evening. So it really goes throughout my day. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. You do, do you do a lot of aerobics, a lot of resistance training, or you mix it all up? Cardio. I think cardio is really important to get your blood pumping, keep your cardiovascular system healthy and get those endorphins flowing. We move our body. We activate our, our left frontal lobe and it just makes us happy. I'm somebody I've been dealing with anxiety on and off for big part of my life. And I find with nutrition and with exercise, I can really manage it very, very well. 
And then I also do weights, resistance training. Gotcha. And now at a time like now, I mean, when it's, it's you know, people are staying in, people aren't mm -hmm. going, we see the rise of COVID across the country. What kind of advice would you give a person right now to, to help maintain, you know, keep a healthy mind and, and, and to really kind of jumpstart their positive lifestyle rather than negative? What would you say? How do you get started? I think it's very important to realize that whatever state we're in, we can change that state. So let's say you feel anxious or a little sad and depressed. Get your body moving. You may not feel like it at first, and it doesn't have to be difficult. Take a little walk, do some jumping jacks, do some push-ups. Once you get your body moving, I promise you within two, three, four minutes, you will experience a state change. You will feel more positive. And more important than that, it will prove to you that you're not a hostage of your state, but you are in control of your state when you can take action. Um, and another very, very simple thing to do, just breathe. It sounds so simple. It is simple, but it can sometimes be very hard. But if you focus on your breath and breathe in slowly and breathe out slowly, you will get out of that fight or flight state. You will calm your nervous system down and your mind will open up to get out of this fear tunnel vision. So these are two simple things you can do to control your state. If anybody want to get more information from you, where do they go? Would you have a website? Yes. Uh, so they can uh, find me on Instagram at Ariana Summer, A-R-I-A-N-E-S-O-M-M-E-R. -E -E or they can find me on my website. I have recently launched the Superhumanized podcast, which is all about um, giving people the tools to optimize physically, mentally, and spiritually. So you can drop me a message there at superhumanized.com. Dot com, and I'll be glad to answer any questions people have and support them on their wellness journey. What's what's up next for you, Ariana? I mean, are you, you got a book coming out? You, do, you have a podcast, but what are you doing? What's up next? I'm actually working. My next steps is so superhumanized for me is really a bigger vision. So yes, I'm working on a book where I want to share all the things that I've learned in the last 13 years on my own wellness journey, and I'm also getting ready to launch my own supplement line, vegan, of course. And um, my focus is to help people solve their biggest pain points. For example, if they can't sleep well, or if they suffer from a lack of energy or help them boost their well-being and immunity. So that is my, those are my next steps. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being a part of Free Thinking Today. And if anybody wants to get any information again, what's the website? One more time superhumanized.com superhumanized.com you've been listening to ariana summer and i'm telling you fantastic advice you just inspired me to get my butt back in gear get my butt back in gear and i will today so thank you so much homie and um, you know let's be in touch yes let's be in touch montel keep me posted anything i can do to support you you let me know thank That's you for having me on your show oh no thank you for being here and you know you always have a home here anytime you want let me know Love to have another conversation with you. And I'm sure that everybody tuned in today is going to want to hear more from you tomorrow. So thanks so much. Ariana Summer, you've been listening to Free Thinking with Montel. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining me on Free Thinking with Montel. Please make sure you're subscribed and hit the bell to be notified when new episodes post each week. We'd love to hear feedback, so please send us your comments. <laughs>